we just had a black president. Doesn't it seem so long ago? Obama, can you come back, please? We miss you. We need you. Um, so don't tell me black people can't do it all. He was in the White House. Fall for you, Glenn Coco. You go, Glenn Coco. Hi. <laughs> Y'all, welcome back to my YouTube. It's been a while. It, it's it been some, some months. Um, I just wasn't really in the YouTube mood. I'm really... I've, I've completely forgotten how to vlog. Like, talking to this camera is kind of weird for me right now, but it's whatever. Um, I actually recorded this video last night. And I woke up this morning, watched it, hated it. So, um, I'm re-recording it. But I do want to start off this video with a quick life update. So, I finished my season in Israel in March. I was there from October to March. It was great. I'm not really going to talk much about it because I really feel like that happened five million years ago. Um, but just know I had a great time uh, and I played well and that's what's important. Um, got back and we've all been in quarantine. So um, I've been at home with my family, which has been amazing. I love them. I thought I was going to rip their heads off being in this house with all of them at the same time. But it was actually so fun. Let's see, things that I have been doing during quarantine. Um, I've been making a lot of TikToks. Um, what else? I've been, even though I haven't been making YouTube videos, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Um, hair videos specifically. I learned how to do this ponytail witchcraft. I wish I had learned how to do this sooner. And if I was confident enough that this would stay secure, I would play in this, cause look how cute it is, okay? I also learned how to finally do my edges after two, three years of trial and error, guys. I finally got it. The forehead is out, people. So I've embraced it, I hope you guys can too. The jokes will come, I, I get it, but look how shiny it is, oh my goodness. This is light, let me fix this. <laughs> Man, whatever, it is what it is. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, I also, oh, also during quarantine, I had to embrace home workouts. So I've actually written my own workout plan. So if you guys are interested in getting workout plans, please hit me up because I will send you some. I love it. Home workouts have been amazing. I've transferred my body completely. I will not take all the credit. Shout out to my trainer, Drake. Um... But I did not think that I'd be able to make this transformation without a gym. So it's possible, y'all. Trust me. We also got a Peloton bike, which I am obsessed with. Um, so shout out to Peloton. Um, but yeah, I've had a pretty... Personally, I've, a, I've had a pretty uneventful quarantine. Now to what this video is really about. Um, I know you guys have seen the world the last couple weeks. It's been... It's been a lot, it's been sad, it's been a hot mess. Um, it's been disheartening, it's made me angry. Um, I've been wanting to make a video like this for a while, but it's like one thing just comes after another, after another, after another. Um, and I was really pissed off, like, at our country, at people. I was like, why, why does this keep happening? Like. I don't know, maybe at 25, I just, obviously at 25 you see the world a little bit differently. So this situation, the situations, the the George Floyds, the Breonna Taylors, this is not new. But what is new to me is how deeply I've been hurt by, by it. Even though it hasn't directly affected me, every time I see a new black person on the news for, for being killed, um, it's, it's heartbreaking, but I do want to, I do come from a place of, of love and, and peace. I do not want to make a video <laughs> coming like with hate. I don't have hate in my heart. I don't, um, y'all know that I've had a lot on my mind for sure. And I don't think that 
social media has been enough. I I feel like some things that I want to say need to be spoken, they need to be heard, not read and interpreted the way you want. I want you to hear my 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 voice. How if I'm angry, if I'm sad, if I am indifferent, like I need y'all to hear that. I've just seen a lot of dialogue between all types of people, intelligent or unintelligent dialogues, mostly unintelligent dialogues. And I try not to comment on those, but sometimes it's, you just got to. You got to check people sometimes, even if it's an egg on Twitter. I'm trying to do better, guys, I promise. And I feel like today, okay, this is perfect example. Like this, this ha I made this video last night and this morning I woke up to some bullshit. Like if, if y'all don't know, like the, the hierarchy of social media is Twitter, Instagram, everything else. Maybe Facebook could be up there. I don't really go on Facebook, but I, I heard things get heated on Facebook. So I don't, I don't really know about all that, but I just, I do know that Twitter is, is where you're gonna get a lot of your information from. So today I was on I was on Twitter. And um so they announced they announced our league having our season. So that was exciting. That was I don't know what date it was, but I saw someone this morning tweet, oh my gosh, they should put a reality TV show crew in the bubble. For everyone to watch mind you a week ago i tweeted that i wanted to vlog our experience during the season i've i have a problem with that. i have a problem with it like i have a problem with people taking us our stories our personalities and trying to pitch them to other people we want to tell our stories let us tell it if this, isn't, if this isn't the time you guys want us to take control of our stories, our narratives, then I don't know what time is better. I, I've been able to see that who is truly in our corner, and I mean our as black people, then black athletes, then black women, okay? I'm part of all three of those communities. I see people who are in our corner, and then I see people who look at us and see an opportunity. And today, I was very annoyed to see someone look at us and just see an opportunity. Then, our Players Association, like, they, they do so well, but today they really pissed me off. Tweeted at Hulu, Netflix, E, VH1, MT. Have y'all seen how they portray black women on their, on their networks? Have you seen it? Love and Hip Hop. Wags. Um, you know, I don't really watch that much reality TV, but I, and I don't because I don't like how black women are portrayed on it. So the fact that they wanted to do that, they tweeted that, it, it, it annoyed me. So I had to say something. I said something because on E, we had a show, WAGS, and they issued their Black Lives Matter statement, whatever. And the entire cast of the show, black women, were up in arms because they were like, there's no, y'all are not, y'all are not about to lie to all these people because of how you, how you portrayed us on the show, how you canceled our show, and how, how you were not happy with how we portrayed ourselves as black women. So I, oh, I had to nip that in the butt. But right, what's important to me is, is being able to make a change and I feel like I'm in a position where I can speak up. Some people will listen, some people will agree, some people will disagree, um, but at least it's gonna start a dialogue. And yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of people speaking up and do I appreciate that? Of course I do. Do I also think that people are speaking up because everyone else around them is speaking up? Yeah, I do, for sure. I think a lot of people are just following what everyone else is doing. Um, like, let's talk about Instagram, the black squares. At first, when those first started being posted, I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. And thinking back on it, thinking back on the, the black squares, I really don't care if you posted a black square or not. I really don't. I think this time has forced a lot of people to look at themselves in the mirror and look at our society and see how messed up things truly are. But I don't think enough people have 
been looking at how incredible black people in the United States are and the fact that we have been able to be successful in a society where so many things are stacked against us. So many things. And I just, I don't think that that gets recognized enough. Um... I need all the white guilt also to stop. Please spare me with the white guilt, please. I get that you guys feel bad, I understand. I understand that you, you feel bad about what's happening, but imagine how we feel. Imagine how we feel every day. Don't resent your white privilege, don't. Why would you do that? You have it, use it for good. Promote change in your friend groups, in your community, in your workplace, use it. And believe me, I I have definitely appreciated the efforts of all these companies like Netflix and Hulu, Instagram putting a black owned business page on Instagram. All these statements that companies have been putting out one by one by one about how important black lives are, but honestly, I'm a I'm a cynical person and I and I love and hate that about myself, but I the cynic in me finds it to be complete trash, bullshit, all of it. I'm calling bullshit on all of it because, because racism has been here forever. And because you guys think that you, you can put out a statement and tell us that you see us, that it's going to make things better. No, I'm not, I'm not going for it. And neither should y'all. Have you guys looked at Hulu? So they have a section, it's called Black Stories, and I, I didn't even see it till the other day. And every movie was like, tragic. You know there are black stories that aren't tragic or filled with crime or drugs or violence. There are some amazing black stories. How come those never get told? On Netflix, The Help. That was the most watched film in the last couple of weeks. The Help, about a fictional story about maids. <laughs> Y'all, I wish I could make this up. I, uh, oh, this is, I did think this was actually made up. I thought this was a Photoshop picture. Here, I'm gonna show it. Can't take loss? Really? Really? Who okayed that? Like our country literally is a joke. It's a sitcom at times. I, I can't I can't believe that. I find all these gestures I don't even know if they come from a genuine place. I really don't, but I think that they're annoying. And I think they're tone deaf. Completely tone deaf. You guys just did y'all just discover us? Did we just get here? Like that's what I, that's what I think. Did y'all just realize that we make nice things, we provide amazing services. We are qualified for those jobs, those leadership positions that were worthy of those advertisement campaigns. We can, it's just also frustrating. Like black people are not charity cases. And that's exactly how I feel like we're being treated. We're people. Amazing, resilient, intelligent people. And we've always been that. So just everybody, I just think they need to stop. Like, it, it's just, it all just seems so fake to me, that's all. Because when you really think about it, the entire world, not just a state, a city, a country, the world had to stop. Everyone had to go home, not work, not be busy, not be overworked, overtired, for people to realize that there's something seriously wrong with the way our world and country operates. It took that for y'all to realize how racist it is in the United States. Come on. If any of you guys truly believe that all of a sudden people, I don't, I just, it's like they think we're dumb. Oh. Oh my gosh, you guys have been treating been treated like that. Oh my gosh. Aunt Jemima's ra oh my gosh, Paw Patrol. Really? Really? Y'all gonna cancel Paw Patrol? Y'all gonna cancel Aunt Jemima? 
but you letting black men get gunned down daily for nothing that's that's what that's what people are mad at paw patrol if you don't know what paw patrol is it's a cartoon a kid's cartoon i just i'm hoping that this is just not a a small blip that it's not just a little a little movement a little wave that people are riding because everyone else is because that's how our society is I hope this is real. I mean, I see change happening. I really do. Um, I just hope that it can continue because this is not a problem that you can throw words and money at. You gotta put, you gotta put your money where your mouth is. Like you need to, we need to see something. Companies. I don't want to see your, your, your apologies. I don't want to see your statements on your little black background. I don't want to see that. I want to see black CEOs. I want to see black CFOs. I want to see black women running companies. I want black women leading boardrooms. That's what I want to see. When I see that, I want to see money getting put back into our black communities, our black schools. That's what I want to see. I don't care that you took Aunt Jemima off the syrup bottle. <laughs> I don't care about that. I don't care. What I care about is uplifting the black community. I care about charging the officers, charging the people that killed innocent black men and women. I care about that. And I hope everyone else does too. This is not, black lives are not a, this is not a trend. And the thing that we really have to understand is this is going to take some time. It's not going to happen overnight. And you know, I was black before all this happened. I'll be black tomorrow. I'm going to be black when all this is over and life hopefully goes back to normal. I can't take off this. I can't put on a Black Lives Matter cape and go out in the world and then go home and take it off. This is my life, this is our lives. This is not something that we can turn off and on. And I love being black. I wouldn't change it for the world. No, I hate, I hate when people say all lives matter. I hate it. I hate it only because right now, in this moment, it's black lives. But I've seen it, I've seen it everywhere. People say this is not a, a black white problem, this is a, a humanity problem. And I agree. I'm tired of, of black people being limited to apologies, hashtags, petitions. We're so much more than that. But with that being said, we're just getting started because I don't see this letting up anytime soon. And if you think that our work is done, you're very wrong. So I'm proud of the change that we've been able to to do so far, but we got an uphill battle. Like, there's a battle ahead. And just know, we coming. We're not stopping because we deserve, we deserve more than what we've been given. But on that note, WBA is back. Um, super excited about that. Um, like I said before, there's been a lot of negativity surrounding the decision to bring sports back. Um, which actually is dumb to me. I mean, people are saying it's going to be a distraction, but I don't think it's going to be a distraction at all. If anything, it's going to bring more attention to the things that we're already fighting for, at least those who have been fighting up to this point. How do we not use the, this platform that we've been given, whatever level of celebrity any of us have, to continue to fight for, for our communities, for our people? You want us to just sit at home. At the end of the day, people still have to go back to work. So if you just think about it as simple as possible, we are going back to work. How would you like it if I told you, no, don't go back to your job and make money for your family and yourself. I want you to sit at home. We're in a pandemic still, so you will be at home. I want you to sit at home and make a change from there when you could go to work and make a big, bigger difference there. 
How does that sound? Stupid, right? All I'm saying is, in our league, we have 144 players, right? I'm gonna estimate 80 plus percent are black, okay? That's a small sample size, so well, I'll give you a bigger one. The NBA. They have 30 teams, right? 15, 17 players per team, right? So that's too many. I didn't feel like doing all that math. So um, I just took the three most valuable teams, according to Forbes, which are the Knicks, Lakers, Golden State Warriors. And I just calculated the percentages of, of black men on their rosters. And the Knicks have 16 out of 17 black players. The Lakers have 16 out of 17 black players. And the Warriors have 13 out of 15 black players. So doing that math, that is a whopping 92%. Why would you not want people a part of these leagues speaking up about what's going on? On a big platform, a lot of players in both leagues have been speaking up, going to protest, donating money, signing, they've been doing it all. So why would you not want them to continue that fight on a global scale? In a safe environment, hopefully. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. If you think sports are gonna be a distraction, you are crazy, crazy. I have not seen one person ask a musician to stop making music. I've not seen one person ask the hairstylist to stop going to their salons. I haven't seen anybody ask the news anchors to stop reporting what's going on in the world. They're all making money. They're they're doing their job. So what makes us different? Is because we're the black we're the black league, we're the black leagues. So we have to we got to take the money out of our pockets and sit at home or, or go out and do what y'all think that we should be doing. Uh, it's just frustrating to even have to explain this. And yeah, people might, do, people might decide not to, to, to play their their sports because they feel like it's not right for them and that's completely fine. Look at my more. She left. She left in her prime at that to go fight for social reform in the criminal justice system. And if you decide to come play, come play. But use your platform to continue the conversations that are happening right now. They're not going to stop. And if you guys think that we, black women, us, black people, black athletes, are going to get to a basketball court and forget about what's going on in the world, you're dumb. Simple. No way. It's too many of us are affected by what's going on for us to just forget about it and not speak on it. I'm just here to remind everybody that our our job is a sport. Yes, it's a form of entertainment, but our only we don't just enter, like that's not all we do. We're not we're not entertainers. We inspire, we lead, we enact change, we speak up. So if anybody thinks that us going back to sports is going to make us forget about all those things, then shame on you because all that is is going to give us a megaphone. Really, we're gonna be on TV, streamed online, hopefully. Two of those are hopefully, for us at least. I just don't, why would we not take advantage of this moment, of this time, for a league that is majority black? That's, a, that's another crazier part. We are one of the few businesses, companies, organizations, whatever you wanna call it, that is majority black women. And we have a chance to speak up and you guys want us to stay home? Whatever. Whatever. 
I've always admired that about the WNBA though. We're always front and center of social issues, no matter what issue they are. We fight so hard for ourselves, for other people. I love it. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to be a part of this league. It's incredible. You look at anything that's going on in the world, you're gonna see at least one WNBA player speaking up about it, going out in the community about it, making a change about it. It's admirable. So say what you want about our league, about the players in our league, but you can't say that we don't make noise and that we don't care about our, about our people, our, our, our culture, our communities. You can't say that, you can't say it. And that's fine, you can say whatever else you want. Stay in the kitchen. Y'all aren't as good, y'all have no fans. Y'all, blah, blah, blah. What are you doing for your community? Things you need to think about. But I wasn't trying, I was not trying to make this a super long winded video. I don't know how long this is gonna end up being, but I had to get some things off my chest. Um, this is not gonna be the only video like this. I have so much more I wanna say. Um, but I did just want to include talking about the WNBA a little bit because that is an organization I'm super proud to be a part of. Um, and I'm really excited that we're able to continue our season, um, even with, with, with what's going on in the world right now. Um, I think this is going to be good. I think it's going to be good for us. I think it's going to be good for people. It's not going to be a distraction. So I wish people would stop saying that. But, um... I'm super proud to be part of an organization that is always front and center of social issues. That is why I'm, I'm personally not worried about that happening to us when we go into our bubble. I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about it at all. But um, I didn't want to come off angry or upset. I mean, I am kind of upset, but I just wanted this video to be just telling y'all and showing y'all how I've, I've been feeling about things that have been going on for the last few weeks. Um, if you agreed with things I said, cool. If you disagreed, that's cool too. I mean, the point of this video is to have was to start up a discussion, bring awareness, um, show y'all that I do have valid opinions that maybe I don't express on social media. Um, so I brought them here. Um, I'm back. I'm back on YouTube, y'all. I forgot how fun this was to make to make videos. Um, but I'm super excited to get back on the court. I've been training like crazy. I was very, 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 very positive that we were going to have a season. So that's how I've been training. And I was right. So I'm happy about that. Um, I'm going to continue to make vlogs about going to Minnesota, going to Florida, if we do end up going there. Um, being in Florida, being in the bubble at IMG. I'm, I'm going to document all of it. Um, let me know in the comments, y'all, like what type of videos you guys want to see. If you guys want to see interviews, I can make podcasts, um, do like confessional type things. I can do everything. And, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot of free time in there. So I'm open to all ideas. So um leave comments share this video subscribe i promise you guys i'm going to provide as much content as possible um thank you for watching i love y'all um we're gonna get through this tough time change is coming change is happening remember that love conquers all and all black lives matter they do